internet scams on dating sites and stuff right now are completely out of control. This is a multi billion dollar industry a year, a year industry where scammers are taking money from helpless men and women online. Uh, they're faking who they are. They're tricking people. They're getting people to fall in love with them. There's all kinds of crazy scams going on out there and long distance relationships and online relationships have become an incredibly common thing. I hear about it from women all the time who are seeing or dating or in relationships, not only with men who are, you know, like a hundred miles away or in a different state, but on the other side of the entire planet as they are. And so how do you know if this person that you've been talking to is a scammer or if they're a real genuine person who's looking to get to know you? If you're ready to hear the most important signs to figure out if he's a scammer or not, type yes into the chat and let's get started. Hello, my name is Matthew Coast and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the four signs that you're dealing with a scammer. These are the most important signs that you can look for. And they are giant red flags that there's something weird going on here. And so let's talk about it. Sign number one is that he professes his love really, really quickly. And so he doesn't know who you are, right? You guys haven't met but you seem to be exactly the type of woman that he's been searching for his entire life. He wants to get married to you. He wants to treat you right because you're the one, you're the one that he's found. And it's usually in a very, very short period of time because scammers know that if they don't get you hooked really, really quickly, the chances of getting you hooked at all are really, really slim. And so he tries to, get you caught as quickly as possible. They call this love bombing. This is, this is a technical term out there. I don't know how technical it is, but basically what they do is they say lots and lots and lots of really sweet and wonderful things to you, telling you how amazing and wonderful you are. They know that you're absolutely perfect. You're the best woman that they've ever met in their entire lives. And they're doing this to manipulate you. That's what's happening here. Love bombing is manipulation or it's a giant red flag, either one, right? There's, there's something wrong with a person if they're falling in love immediately and there's something weird going on there, right? And sometimes this happens with guys from a biological standpoint, but it usually doesn't happen online. If it does, it usually indicates some kind of insecurity, massive insecurity that they have or issues that they have going on within themselves that they're getting overly attached to people that they don't even know yet. And so if he's getting super attached to you and he doesn't even know you and he thinks that you're perfect in the one, it's a giant red flag, whether he's a scammer or not. It should be a giant red flag that makes you feel like you should put on the brakes for a minute and kind of figure out what's going on here. So if you're with us right now, say hi in the chat and tell us where in the world you are watching this from. It's cool to see women from all over the world watching these live streams. So sign number two is that he has some job where he claims that he can't really talk to you. And so a lot of times these guys will say that they're on some kind of oil rig or something, or they're in the military on deployment, or they're some kind of doctor with an international organization and they're in Kenya or somewhere, right? Where they're having a written, there's something going on in their situation where they're unable to contact you and call you and talk to you and get on voice chat, which by the way, if you don't know, when I first got into the, the women's dating industry and started coaching in here, I started hearing a lot about this stuff. And at the time before, some people don't know this, but before I got into the women's dating industry, I was actually doing, uh, I was in the military and I was doing military operations. And after that I became a contractor. And so I was 
literally in the military deployed to a lot of these places around the world. And then I was a military contractor who was not only, I worked on oil rigs some of the times, but I also did other things. And so I would hear these, these stories from these women. They're like, if they're on an oil rig, it's, he's a scam. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, you know, not necessarily. I, at the time was working on oil rigs because I wasn't making enough money from working in the, in the dating industry to really pay my bills. And so I had to go overseas and work in the Middle East on these different contracts. And so I've, I've heard a lot of these different things. And one thing that I can tell you for certain is that even if he's in the middle of the ocean, even if he's in the middle of the ocean, he can still call you. He can still contact you. He can still talk to you. They've got satellite phones. They've got, even if he's in the middle of the Indian ocean, he can still call you and talk to you. And so that's not really a good excuse for the most part. For the most part, it's not really a good excuse. And, you know, why is he dating if he's in this crazy situation, right? There's something weird going on. Like if, if he can't talk to you, if he can't video chat with you, another thing, they can fake video chats, right? Sometimes these guys will send videos and it's basically him just talking and then asking for feedback and then talking some more and then asking for feedback and talking more. And they're getting better and better and better at faking video. And so it's one of those things where you have to be really, really cautious if he's got some kind of job where he's out in the middle of nowhere and he can't talk to you or he can't video chat with you. And if he does, it's kind of this weird video where you're not really interacting. He's not really interacting with you or any of that kind of stuff. Right. So uh, there, here's some other things, right? He might be in a place where, um, you know, he's traveling just outside of your country. You know, he's, he's, you know, all over somewhere on the other side of the world. And, just to let you know, almost every country in the world, almost anywhere you go, you can video chat, you can call people, you can talk to people on a regular basis. So it's not really a good excuse. So that's that one. That's sign number uh, two is that he claims that, or he has some kind of job where he claims that he can't really talk to you. Sign number three is he tries to build a connection really, really quickly. And usually the sign of this, and I, I've been in the dating industry for a long time. So I know a lot about the different signs of like, how, how do people build connections really quickly? And one of the ways that they do this is they get really vulnerable, right? They, they take risks. And if you're getting vulnerable and you're taking risks, you're doing things like you're, you're telling somebody something that you've never told anybody else, or you're, uh, you know, they, they tell you that, uh, they haven't really felt this way for anybody else before, or they, they give you some kind of pet name, or they have some really emotional story about themselves and their family, and they're open to sharing it and talking to you about it very, very quickly or they're on a very emotionally compelling mission to help people and work with different people. These are ways that you can quickly build an emotional connection with someone, which is actually something that you can learn from if you want to build emotional connections faster with people. But it should be a, a, a big red flag that this person, that there's something weird going on with this person. If they're building this emotional connection with you really quickly, they're, they're giving you these pet names. They're, they're connecting with you. They're telling you these things about themselves that they don't tell anybody else. They're, they're, they're feeling these feelings for you that they don't feel for anyone else. Any of that kind of stuff, you should look at it and be like, okay, what's going on here. There's something weird here. Maybe I should look at it a little bit more closely. And then sign number four is the most important sign. I'll get to that in just one second. But if you get what I'm talking about right now, say, I get it in the chat. If you don't get what I'm talking about, go ahead and ask whatever questions or anything that you have. And we'll be answering the questions here in just a little bit. So sign number four is that he eventually tries to get you to buy something or pay for something or give him money in some way. And it's usually not just giving him money. It's usually money for something. Although sometimes it is just giving a person money. I've talked to people that have just done this, right? Because these scammers are getting 
from some people, it's just thousands of dollars. If you look up some of the stories online, you'll hear about people giving millions of dollars away. This is a multi-billion dollar a year business. And so at some point, they're ultimately going to start asking you to pay for something or give them money in some way. And this usually comes in the form of paying for like a plane ticket or some kind of other travel expenses. A lot of times it's to come and visit you um, or pay for some kind of surgery or some kind of medical expense that they're having for either themselves or maybe their child or a loved one that's really important to them. Or maybe they're trying to get you to pay for customs fees to send you something or give you something, but you have to pay for the customs fees. And so they give you this thing that you have to send the money over and then you'll get their present or their money or whatever they're sending you, or they're going to try to pay off uh, some kind of damn, uh, gambling debt with that money or pay for a visa or other travel documents because they got stuck somewhere and they're trying to get somewhere else, but the military is not paying for it or their contracting is not paying for it, which by the way, is never something that happens. The, the uh, military will never stick somebody somewhere and not pay for them to get back. And contractors, they don't do that either. They don't just send you somewhere and just hope you get back. They pay for the entire trip. It doesn't matter if you as a military person or a contractor has any money or not. They send you there, they bring you back and they pay for it all. The, the contracting company does, the military does. So if they ever say anything like that, it's, it's a lie. Man, that, that doesn't happen. That's not what happens. And then the next one is paying for presents for a daughter or something like that. And, and a lot of times it's not just sending money. It's not just paying for something. A lot of times it, it is actually wiring money, but sometimes it might be like with money pack or some kind of gift cards from Amazon or Google or play, or the most common one that I've seen is iTunes cards or steam cards. And the reason that they do this is because it's very, very difficult to trace it, but it's really easy for them to exchange it for money. And so they will get cards from you and they'll say that it's for all these different causes, but really they're just taking money from you is all they're really doing. And so it could be that it could be wiring money. It could be anything, any time where they try to make you pay for something that is uh, should be a no-go for you. It doesn't matter how long you've been talking to them because sometimes these scammers will put in a lot of effort, right? They will talk to you for months or even years before they ask you to start paying for things. And so it's really, really important that you make sure you're not getting into these crazy situations where you end up getting really invested. You end up falling in love for somebody who's not even who they say they are. It's, you know, not the person they steal other people's identities and they take that identity and they use it and they show that to you and they make up all these stories. And I, sometimes I get women that are like, no, it's not, you know I mean? I'm a good person. I'm giving them money. And it is, you know, you are a good person, but you're not giving somebody money for the reason that you think you're giving them money. It's making you feel good about yourself, but you're feeding this scam of people that are just using you to get money for whatever their needs are. And it has nothing to do with what it is that whatever story they're talking to you about. So how do you protect yourself against this? So if you suspect that maybe the person that you're talking to might be a scammer of some sort, here's what you want to do. And, and by the way, if you're with us right now in the chat, Tell us some other signs. If you have some signs or signals that somebody's a scammer that I haven't talked about yet, go ahead and put that in the chat because uh, I'm sure a lot of women will want to hear about what are these different things. So how do you protect yourself? If you suspect that they are a scammer of some sort, take their photo and look it up right? Look it up on the internet. There's a way to do a reverse search. Google has this thing where you can do a reverse search. You can do it on your phone. On the desktop, You what you do is you right click on your mouse and it'll allow you to reverse image search his image. And it'll come up with Google results. And it'll show usually if he's a scammer, it'll show his picture with a bunch of different names. 
And all those different names are different accounts that he's created that he's scamming people with, or she's scamming people with. And so you want to do a reverse image search. And sometimes you'll have scammer databases where commonly used photos, they'll show up there. And so you want to do a reverse image search on it. You want to look up their name on the internet and Google them. You can also do a background check on them and find out information about them. But I found that some of those background checks aren't always reliable. They don't have everybody's name. It could be a different person somewhere else. And so it's difficult to get a reliable thing from, um, from a, uh, uh, like a background check sometimes. And so you can do that though. You can do a background check. You can do a Google search and find out, if there's a person and if that's them and how much background they have on that, you can look them up on social media and just look to see if there's any red flags there. Are they doing anything weird in their social media accounts? Are there multiple social media accounts? Whatever, right? Is it a different person? Um, the second thing that you want to do, and this is the most important thing is never, ever, ever pay for anything or give money to anyone. Just don't ever pay for anything for anybody. Just if a guy needs something, if, especially men, right? If he's going to be a man and he's going to be a man for you in your relationship, he needs to figure out his finances and be a capable and independent man who can come and do things, right? And so you shouldn't be paying for things. Uh, and if he's trying to get, he's like sending you money and you have to pay for customs or whatever, just don't do it. Don't do any of those things. Don't pay for any things. He'll put a lot of pressure on you to do it. And if he's putting a lot of pressure on you, then you absolutely know that you should not be doing it. So do not, do not do it. Do not pay for anything. Never pay for anything for anyone ever. Just don't do it. This person isn't who they say they are. They're usually, like I said, stealing somebody else's identity, stealing their photos, stealing their stories and stuff, all just to scam you. Their story isn't real. It's a hundred percent fake and made up just to scam you out of money. You may feel good giving them money because it feels like it's a good cause, but they're actually just taking money from you and using it for something completely different. And so if you've already given a scammer money and you're like, what do I do now that I've given them money? What you want to do is you want to contact your financial institution uh, that you pay through things for and report the scammer. And it can be really difficult because a lot of times you can't really get that money back, but you can let the financial institution know what's going on and they may or may not be able to get your money back but at least you can feel like you've done something about it. You can report the scammer um, and just feel like you've, you've actually accomplished something there. So that's that. What questions? Oh, let me go over the different signs again. Again, this is a huge multi-billion dollar industry. LD long distance relationships are really, really common. So if you're in one, you have to be really smart about things. My suggestion is that you don't date people that you can't see that are far, far away, that you only date people that are around you. If you are dating somebody that's far, far away and you've never met them before, my suggestion is that you also date people that are around you and get into abundance so that you're not so stuck on this person that's, you know, that you're not even going to see that you might not ever see that might be telling you crazy things, sweet things to get your hopes up and then crush your soul later down the line. So the signs are he professes his love very, very quickly. He starts love bombing you. Number two is that he has some job where he can't really talk to you and he's in, unable to talk to you, create some kind of nonsensical story about it. Number three is they try to build a connection really, really quickly. And they usually do that by showing vulnerabilities and doing risky behaviors from an emotional standpoint. Number four is they usually they eventually ask you to buy something. And so you just don't want to do that. Just don't pay for anything. Look them up, reverse image, search them, never give money to anyone. And if you've given money to them, 
then report them, tell your financial institution about it and don't ever do it again. All right, so let's go. So lots of different highs. Adriana says, does someone from military need 150 euro for a taxi ticket so he can fly to you? No, he does not need that. Do not, like I said, don't give anybody money, Adriana. It is a scam 100%. If he's in the military, he's given money every single month. All Most of his stuff is paid for every single month. And so if he's in the military and he doesn't have money, then he's an idiot and, or he's scamming you <laughs> one or the other. Uh, uh, he's either an idiot or he's not really who he says he is and he's scamming you. And it's most likely the second one, especially if he's asking you for money because he shouldn't be asking you for money. Simple one says, when they say U.S. Army, big red flag, we don't say U.S., we just say Army. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. Lots of highs, hellos, hello, 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 people all over the world. Suzanne says, hey, Matthew, I really know what you are talking from. Those men are easy to see through if you have found yourself worthy again. Yeah. And, and you know, just get your, get educated, right? Educate yourself, watch videos like these, figure out what's going on and make sure you're being smart about it. Roland says he spoke on the phone to me every day, but I got the excuses as well. The phone is broke and would never send me a pic with his background. Yeah. And you can do things like what Ro Roline, I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Roline is saying about like having him send you photos with like they do this with Facebook. If, if you get like kicked out of your account or something, they'll have you like hold up a card that says, this is my name. And you're like, or like a identification thing or something, or, or they'll have you draw something on a card. I've, I've had to do this with Facebook before and you can do that with them. And then you're finding out what's going on with them and making sure that they are actually the person that they say that they are. Hello, Canada. Matthew says, ask him to turn the camera on during the chat. Then, you know, yep, there you go. Georgia says, Matt had five different men trying to scan me, but I wasn't having any of it. Don't have any of it there, Georgia. Don't have any of it. Jennifer says, I've got friends in the military out in the Middle East that I Snapchat every day. Yeah, if you're in the military, even if you're in the Middle East, like when I was in the Middle East, I was in Iraq. And when I was in Iraq, there were guys that were like playing World of Warcraft games on you know, really fast HDMI cables or HDMI cables, ethernet cables that were, that were shooting out like, you know, 10, 15, 20 megabytes per second internet connections. And so if a guy's saying that he's in the military and he can't contact you, it's probably a scam. If he can't talk to you on the phone or whatever, it's probably a scam. Amira says, but military is cannot use cam when they are in duty. Yeah, but they're only on duty for certain times of the day. They can later on in the day or early in the morning. And so if they're not on duty, they can talk to you, right? Which is every day there's times when they're on duty and when they're not on duty. And so if they're on duty, yeah, they, they shouldn't be talking to you, right? But if they're not on duty, which happens every single day, right? Think about it like a job. Being in the military for most guys in the military, it's just like a normal job. And he's working during certain times of the day and he's off work during certain times of the day. And that shift could be anywhere between eight and 12 hours, but there's going to be times when he's off duty, when he can talk to you, when he can interact with you. And so him saying that he's in the military and he's somewhere, so he can't talk to you because he's on duty all the time is just nonsense. Just nonsense. Yep. Evie says, I have called him on video when he wasn't accepted and answered. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Scamming for sure. Karen says he also claims to be a widower or he caught his wife cheating on him with his best friend, right? So they're, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get your sympathy. They're trying to build an emotional connection, right? Because being a victim, and this is a very, very common thing in our society in general right now, is people make themselves victims. And when you're a victim, it's very difficult to get attacked or have somebody do something where they're like, no, you're not or whatever. Right. Cause you're like, no, this happened to me. I can't believe you, you know, treat me like that or talk to me like that, or, you know, pretend like I'm not a victim or whatever. Right. And so what he's doing is he's doing that to you right now. And so what you need to do is you need to just, I mean, if guys start talking like that, I mean, it's fine, but you got to realize that he's coming from a victim mentality at best right? At best, even if he's not a scammer, at best, he's coming from a victim mentality. And so, I mean, if he talks about it from a nonchalant way, it's like, why is he even talking about that? And a bunch of other things, right? So you just want to be careful, right? It's just a red flag. And what a red flag means is it doesn't mean that you should, you know, stop talking to him completely and move on. It means that you should take a deeper look, a closer look. You should pay more attention to what's going on there. Whenever you see something that's a red flag, it doesn't mean to leave. It means to pay closer attention to what's going on with that person. Yeah, there are just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of scammers out there. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Do, do, do. Yeah, be the first to ask for a gift. You, you say that you need a gift. Tell him that you need a gift, right? Yeah. Teresa says they're usually widowed. Wife died of cancer. Kid, kid is in a board, boarding school, blah, 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 blah. Yep, exactly. Peggy says my army medic asked for a new iPhone and T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Bobby says money for his job needs so he can come home to, right? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Adriana says, yes, asking me for a 150 euro taxi ticket, even though I explained to him I am special need mom and I need this money badly. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't care about you because he's just trying to get money from you. That's all he, that's all he wants is money from you. Yeah. Bobby says he needed Apple cards. Yep. 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 Bobby says another needed money after he got illegally kicked out of his apartment. Anything, anytime a guy needs money, don't give it to him. Don't buy iPhone tickets. Don't buy anything. Uh, Evie's saying most scammers are from Nigeria. A lot of them are also from India. They have full call centers. They have centers where that's all they do at these centers is scam people in India. And so it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's in a bunch of places. It can actually also be in, in Europe or America or other places as well, but a lot of them are in Nigeria and India. Bobby says, another wanted me to buy gifts for him and his friends and send them. Yep, asking for money. Yep. 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 Just money. Anytime they need money, they need you to buy something. Teresa says, when I was talking to you, uses Skype needed money to add to his account so he could text and video chat. Yeah. Yep. Most are scammers. Their pictures look like a model. Yep. Matthew says, profile picture tells a lot. Doctor's uniform, army uniform, a widower with a small child. I've seen them all. Lisa says, first red flag, too hot and young. Second, poor English. Yep, poor English is definitely a common one. Definitely a common one. Tracy says, why do men like asking for nudes when you just want to get to know them? Because they're there's a lot of different reasons, right? They're, they're trying to get power. They're trying to feel good about themselves. They're trying to make you do things, right? They're, they're getting compliance from you. And the more that they can do that, 
the better they feel about themselves. It can turn them on. It can make them feel strong. There's a whole bunch of reasons that they do that. But my suggestion is that you don't ever send anybody nudes ever. Just don't ever do it to anybody with anybody ever. You don't know what they're going to do with those photos. We have women in our community who have sent guys nude photos. And then those guys take those photos and show them to their friends and stuff. And they're like, why did you do that? Right. And it's, you don't want to do that. You don't ever want to give those photos. Even if you're in a relationship, you don't know what they're going to do with those photos. If you end up getting out of that relationship or anything. So my suggestion, Tracy, is that you never, ever send anybody any kind of nudes ever. That's my suggestion. Just don't do it. Tell them that you're a classy lady and that you don't do stuff like that because that's not a classy thing to do. And if they want nude photos, just send them to some kind of porn site or something like that, because you ain't going to do that. Tracy, you are worth more than that. You don't do that. Lisa says third. Hello, beautiful, gorgeous, whatever. Nice to meet you on here. Okay. Peggy says they won't talk on the phone because of the accent, or they will tell you beforehand that they have an accent because he was born in another country. Yep. 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 Evie says women go to tarot card read tarot readers and don't know they have fallen in love with scammers from Africa. Okay. Disa says multiple photos that look substantially different from them. Profile not completed. Kathy says, hello, Matthew, shame on them as much money as they are getting their country should be better off, but they're not. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a, that's a totally different conversation altogether, right? There's a lot of, you know, really corrupt governments out there that aren't giving the money to the people and it, the money just goes, I mean, it's not going to their country, right? It's not going to their country. It's not going to fix up their country. Char says he's not into you. He just wants a release. Yep. Asked to join their Facebook. Yeah. I mean, th there's a lot of guys that will just like, just try to like be face Facebook friends with you on Facebook and you have no idea who they are. My suggestion is you don't let those people friend you, right? Why are you allowing people to talk to you? And you know what I mean? If they don't know you and, and I, I know it can seem exciting right? Some guy randomly starts talking to you, telling you that you're beautiful, any of that kind of stuff on Facebook. And so you're like, Oh, this is really exciting. I want to talk to him. This is really great. But then you, you know, you end up in a weird situation. So Karen says they have a female name as their screen name. Yeah. Cause they don't know, they don't know that it's cause they're from a different country. They don't get what's going on there. Yep. 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 Rhonda says they have a child in the hospital and needs money to pay for their life-saving surgery. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Never give men to never give money to men you meet online. Lisa says, if you have not met, you are not dating and you cannot fall in love over text. Chelsea says they use Well, so let's talk about this real quick. So Lisa's talking about this idea that you can't fall in love. And so what actually ends up happening here is you end up falling in love with an image of who they are. I've actually, I've actually done this before where when I was younger, I was in a few different long distance relationships and I thought about this person. I thought I knew this person. I thought I was, you know, really connected with this person in this long distance relationship. And then I go and meet them and spend some time with them. And they're like totally a completely different person in real life where they feel or seem like a different person in real life than they were when I was talking to them online. And so it can actually, it's usually you're falling in love with this perception, this image, this idea of who you think they are rather than who they actually are. And that's a pretty common thing. Even with people that you meet in real life, you can do this and you fall in love with who you perceive them to be or their potential of who they want to become. This is a very common thing that a lot of women do is they fall in love with a man's potential, right? Because he wants to be this amazing, successful, you know, person one day, but he never ends up becoming that person. And so they fall in love with that person that the guy's becoming instead of actually 
like connecting with the guy that they're with right now. And so that's a pretty common thing that can happen. Chelsea says they use different apps too. I remember some scams that happened to me. Yep. Lots of different apps. Never pay a penny. Use two first names. Evie says, and don't travel to them to marry them is a fake marriage. Yep. Bobby says, never send nudes. That's right. Never send them nudes. Never give personal information. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Does anybody have any questions about situations or things going on with them? What's going on with them right now? Newest one is Bitcoin investor, yeah. Yeah. Yep. A lot of times you will not get refunded for it. So Miralu says, I had one that he said he was going to India for a contractor, then called me. He said they had been robbed in the airport. So he needed money to pay some cargo to start the work. From there, I know he was scamming me. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Georgia said, had a man send him money for a new iPhone, wanted to send me $1,000, so he was a millionaire. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just these big stories, right? It's just these big, crazy stories. Just big, crazy stories. Big, big, crazy stories. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Anybody have anything going on? So Teresa said, I did the reverse image thing. Nothing came up. Yeah. And it might not, right? It's just one thing that you want to try of a whole bunch of different things and just look for different stuff, right? So just look at the different things that are going on there and make sure that you're not getting yourself into a crazy situation. Just make sure you're not getting yourself into a crazy situation. Yep. Mary Lou says, do you think military will ask money so that he can pay for vacation so he can see me? No, absolutely not. What happens in the military is people get certain amounts of vacation time. And when he gets vacation time, he's allowed to go and do whatever it is that he wants on that vacation. And so he doesn't have to pay the military so that he can go on vacation. He might have to pay to fly somewhere on that vacation if he wants to do something outside of what the military is willing, willing to send him to. But I mean, if, if he does need money to fly to you, to wherever you are, he should figure that out, right? He's in the military. He needs to, he needs to budget his money. He needs to learn how to use money and be smart about where he's putting his money and make sure that he's putting himself into a good situation financially. If he's not, then he's got some issues, right? He's got some issues financially and that should be a giant red flag for you. So Bell says he needs money to take out, take his side check out, right? Yep. Okay. And Tionette says, someone asked me to pay a special tax on over $1 million that they were getting from in the form of a check because they were not able to do it and they pay me back. Yep. It's a, it's a scam. It's a scam 100% of the time. Scam 100% of the time. Never give them money. Never give them money. Thando says, met this guy on Facebook. We were bonding so well and was getting emotionally attached, but turned out to be a scammer. Yeah, that's why you want to meet up quickly, right? This is, this is the key. Meet up quickly. If you can't meet up, put them on the back burner. Let them figure things out. Let them figure out how to get to you. And if they don't have the money to do that, then they need to grow up and mature and figure their finances out. That's what needs to happen. Yep, they can. They can. 
Lisa says, do not be embarrassed. Learn from it and help others. Exactly. Simple one says, ladies, don't beat yourself up if you've been scammed. They're good at this, but learn from it. Never part with your money. Exactly. 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 Sam says, not just men doing this to women. I have a male friend who met a lady online who is working out on <laughs> Exactly. It does. It happens to both. It happens to both. Absolutely. I, there's a guy when I was actually doing the contracting work, I was on the ship one time and this guy was talking to this woman online on the ship, right? Because you can talk to people on the ship. And we were in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And he was talking to this woman, and he and she was like asking him for all this money and stuff. And everybody was like, "Don't do it! It's a scam, right?" And he was like, "He was like, no, I don't think you don't know our connection. You don't know the love we have between us, right?" And he ended up sending her money. And it was a scam, right? It was a scam. Love says, "Which is the right dating site?" Well, lots of dating sites are. I mean, they're all, they're all going to have scammers on them and it's different depending on your area. So every area is different as far as dating sites are concerned and dating apps are concerned. And so you'll want to test what's good in your area because it could be Facebook. It could be, um, it could be match. It could be Bumble. It could be Tinder, right? People have met their husbands from all of those places. I know women who have met husbands from every single one of those apps, from every single one of those sites, from Plenty of Fish, from all of those, but it's different in every single area and some are better in other areas and all that kind of stuff. And so in my opinion, you can use them and utilize any single one of them or all of them. And my, in my personal opinion, my personal opinion, the best place to meet somebody is offline, is to meet them in the real world and not focus on dating sites. Some people have to, right? And some people it's their only choice and some people it's the best place for them to do it. And so you can do that. However, my suggestion is that you meet people in the real world. Andy says, oh my God, I've had each one. Then I went to another site and my first scammer appeared all in total three days would open a brand new account. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Judy says, all these guys are giving online dating a bad name. It makes me not want to talk to anyone new online. Yeah, it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing. And, and it's happening like what was being said earlier is it's it's happening with uh, with men as well. Like men are being scammed as well. And it's it's a different type of scam. It, it's again, it's a victim story. A lot of times it's, it's far away. You can't reach them. They're in some place where they can't get away from or whatever. And it's just, it's a big scam. It's a big scam. Thank you. Priya says you're really cute. Love from India with wish you tons of success and joy. All right. Karen says, they always ask how long you have been on the site. <laughs> okay. Thando says, someone also asked for my shoe sizes and dress sizes and said that he is sending them using the fastest airline in the morning. Someone asked me to pay $200 for my package and I immediately blocked. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Karen says, it's always a sympathy vote that it's designed to pinprick your conscious into feeling sorry for him. Red flag, BS radar on now, single, st still single, no lies. Yep. Char says, I got emotionally involved with a man I thought was South, South Carolina. Turns out he was a black man in Africa. <laughs> Peggy says, Judy Henson, same here. You're not so many liars. Wish you could meet someone in person. Yeah, that's the best place. In my opinion, that's the best place to meet people is in person. Liam says, it depends if the person is already on leave, but if he is on a peacekeeping mission, he can't be granted leave. Emergency leave can be granted if confirmed too. But if he says otherwise, just know he might be a scammer. Yeah, and just don't don't get overly involved. Don't get overly invested. Don't get overly attached 
to a guy that you haven't met yet, that is far away in a distant land who's falling in love with you, even though he hasn't met you either. Just don't do that. Don't do that whole thing. Just stop doing that whole thing. Just stop it. Rolleen says, it's quite sad that they prey on lonely people that get attached quickly. And I know some, yeah, and, and it's it's really what it is, is a thing to, to challenge you, right? It's a thing to help you grow and become a better person. And yeah, it sucks that they do that. And it sucks that people are willing to pay them and get scammed by them. And some people do it and they know that they're scammers and they continue to do it because the scammers make them feel good. And so it's kind of like a tax for them to feel good from these scammers. Yep. They're retiring in a few months and going to move to your country, expecting you to be in love with them without meeting them. Yep, absolutely. Yep, 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 yep. 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 You gotta, you gotta pay for the package. That's it. Ada says, hello, I'm a girl age 29. I'm dating this guy, but sometimes he doesn't act like we are in a relationship. I'm not sure if he's serious or not. He will ask, how are you? What are you doing? And then done till tomorrow. My question is if he's serious about this or not, because I will be in a relationship while I'm not so confused, but I can't ask him. Well, you, you can ask him and it depends on how long you've been seeing him. You know, is this, have you met him in person, right? If you've met him in person, uh, my suggestion is that you don't ever get exclusive or assume or, or get into a relationship with somebody that you've never met in person. Just don't ever, ever do that. Just never do that again for the rest of your life. And the second thing is that if he really cares about you and he likes you, there's one thing that matters. And that is his movement forward, his investment, him doing things and meeting up with you and connecting with you. And if he's not trying to meet up with you and trying to connect with you and trying to be with you, then he's just not that into you. And so that's what you should assume there, Ada, is if he's not trying to make things happen with you, that it's he's just not that into you. Jennifer says, you buy them, then the then they become too busy to talk to you, right? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Andrea says, one man sends me a prayer every day and lectures me if I go out or have a drink, then gets mad when I don't message him back. Yeah, well, you should just completely stop talking to that person completely. Vicky says, I had a bad relationship experience and now I know I was love bombed in the beginning badly. How can you tell the difference between true emotion and love bombing? Well, love bombing isn't even necessarily not true emotion, right? Because what happens with a lot of guys is they get this biological drive that kicks in. And when a guy feels that, it can feel like love, right? He feels like he's in love. He's infatuated, but he feels like he's in love. And so he'll start thinking of all these amazing things and what your babies are going to look like. And, you know, he wants to fly you around the world and hang out with you in all these exotic places and do all these amazing things with you. And he just, you know, feels all these great things for you. And what you want to do is just slow things down with him. And so it can be real emotion, it can be real emotion, but it's kind of a superficial emotion that ends up dying. And so what you want to do is slow things down and connect with him in different ways and get him emotionally involved with you. That way he starts to sober up and he starts to see the real you and he's still connected to you and he's still falling in love with you and he's still doing all these things. Right. And uh, a lot of that initial stuff it might be emotion, but it's usually of an idealized version of who you are and what things are like with you and all that kind of stuff. I've, I've experienced it multiple times before in the past. And whenever I'm feeling it, I usually, that's usually a red flag for me because a lot of times those emotions come up from very manipulative or gamey or uh, different types of behavior that you feel from a person. 
And so as a man, when I feel that, I'm like, whoa, wait, what's going on here? It, that Maybe that's a red flag for me to watch out for or whatever. But it, it can be real emotion. You just want to... Um, you just want to be aware of it. Right. And, and just kind of pull back and, and push him back and slow things down and make sure that he's getting to know the real you and not getting yourself into any crazy, weird situations too quickly. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to do what you want to do. Blossom Kitty says, can we talk about how it is not a good thing to call them out directly because it helps them get better at it? People often forget that. Well, I mean, it's a really emotional topic. And a lot of times women get really kind of upset about things. And so they're going to they're gonna call them out, right? Women are going to call them out and they're going to get angry and they're going to play with them because some women are bored and so they're going to keep talking to the scammer or, you know, whatever, right? There's a whole bunch of different things that is going to happen from it. And so, I mean, it's one of those things where there's not a whole lot that you're going to do about it by telling women not to call them out. They're, women are going to call them out, right? You're not going to stop women from calling calling these guys out, unfortunately. And I get where you're coming from blossom kitty. And it's a great idea. And it's, you know, you're, you're being really smart about that. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we can do about it. It's like, you know, telling guys not to send pics of their ding dong to women, right? Like we can tell as many men as we want to about it, but men are still going to do it, right? They're still going to do it because it works for some of them. And some of them, it makes them feel really good about themselves or whatever. And so they're going to continue doing it no matter what it is that we say about it. Sure. Rhonda says, thank you for this post. You are absolutely welcome. I hope it's beneficial to lots of people. Yep. Only a couple hours old. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, and one thing you want to remember about these scammers is to not take it. I mean, even if you get scammed and you end up losing some money from it, and I mean, it sucks. You know, it sucks badly. There's nothing like losing hard earned money, not only from losing money, but the embarrassment and the feeling like you're an idiot because you got scammed by somebody and just know that you're not right. These guys are professionals at doing this. And if you get scammed, like that sucks. And, you know, just don't beat yourself up about it. Just get educated, be smart about it. Look for red flags and just be cautious when you're online and you're talking to people and just be smart and only date people that are in your area. Make sure that you're getting on video chat, make sure that you're not giving anybody any money and just be smart about it and just do things in a smart way. And just remember that, that you're, you know, it, it's something that a lot of them are very, very good and professional at. And so that's it for this video. I hope that it has been beneficial. This is a public service announcement to everybody about scammers and helping women make sure that they're not getting scammed in these online romance scams. So thank you very much for being here. I'll speak with you again soon. And always remember, you are worth it. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon. Have a good day. Good night. Good morning. Wherever